Hey folks, I'm so happy to see you here today for the last and final episode of Plain Rainbow Season 2. Happy Friday! I am here with Chris Kramer as my co-host for this very special episode because as James could not be with us right now, I need somebody to help me do this because I'm not capable of doing it all by myself. You know, I need help. I'm sure a little bit technologically impaired after all. So anyways... <laughs> With that being said, would you like to say hi, Chris? Hello. It's good to be back. Yeah. And then we have Randall Martin. Hi, Randall. Hello. Randall is a little bit special. I see this wonderful earring in Randall's ear and like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I know. Maybe I should uh, go make confession because it's not a clip on either. It actually goes through my ear. So, I mean, it makes you happy. It does make me happy. But weren't you raised a good Mennonite boy? I was raised a good Mennonite boy. So I was raised um, Horning, also known as Weaverland Conference, also known as Black Bumper, which is probably what most people would know the church by is like Black Bumper. So, yeah. So were you born in or were you so in? I was born into it um, as far back as <laughs> the pilgrims, you know? <laughs> like I said earlier, <laughs> like my ancestors go back to... Like 1690-something. Yes, literally coming from, you know, being persecuted in, in the European countries. So, yeah, it, I was born into it. Um, all my family is still Mennonite, and I am the black sheep of the family. Uh, so, yeah, it's... You know, you're in very good company. I kind of feel like I might be the black sheep you, of my you family. You feel the same way? I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. What about you, Chris? Do you feel like you're the black sheep of your I'm family? I'm the rainbow sheep of my family. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Definitely the the, I, I definitely am. The rainbow sheep. I gotta start using that term. I like that better than the, the black sheep. Yes. I'm the, definitely the rainbow sheep. So I was a white sheep that just, uh, you know, went to the, the barber and had the... Um, Color done. <laughs> <laughs> rainbow sheep. Yeah, I like rainbow that. sheep. Okay, so we're all rainbow sheep. Yes. Got it. Okay, of our families. Well, so tell me a little bit about like you were obviously born into the church, your entire family's there. Like, where are you at now? Yeah, okay. So, yes, born and raised in it. Um, my story is so complicated. Uh, up till I was about 18 or 19, I was with the Horning Church. I never joined. I never got baptized into the church. Um, but when you're raised in it like that and your family is a part of the church, you're just like kind of automatically just thrown into the church um, and part of the church. And you just wouldn't be able to take communion and you wouldn't be held responsible for like like disobeying church rules per se like you wouldn't have to stand up and confess your sins in front of the church if you were not a member of the church even though your family was part of the church uh so you wouldn't get in trouble with the church but i definitely had my moments where uh people said things to me or i've called my mom and said things that I did that were wrong and bad, which now this, I was not doing anything bad, like at okay, all. So what were you doing? So one evening, uh, this was ooh, probably 12 years ago. I was, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, it was a hot summer evening and I wanted to go for a run and i had on a pair of shorts and if any of you all know like shorts on guys is like of the devil like you do not did you meet the devil that night <laughs> well i didn't but they had a nice phone call with my my mom so anyway yes um i went on a on a run and beforehand my mom told me she said you're going to want to go change because if somebody sees you 
and they call me, you're going to be in big trouble. And I was like, nobody's going to do that at all. And I tell you what, I went for a run, and by the time I got home, somebody already had called my mom and told her, do you know your son is outside wearing shorts? I it can't it do was not. A gossip, it, it was a gossip, Randall. It was a concern for your it soul. It was a concern for your soul because they loved you, wasn't it? Yeah. I, and going to get on the prayer chain. Oh. Even though you weren't a member of the church, I think it's really important to talk about that distinction for a moment because some people define people as, well, you can only say that you were of this church if you were baptized into it. Mm -hmm. When you were born into the church, even if you don't become baptized, even if the church doesn't require you to confess on your knees in front of the church, right. there are still consequences. Yes. For example, like you get in trouble with your mother right. for, for running with shorts on. Which, right. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So if I would have been a church member, like they, that person that would have called my mom probably would have just called the, the bishop of the church. And then I would have got a phone call from the bishop and I would have had to uh, make a confession in front of the church, uh, like right before. So they do communion twice a year, uh, spring and fall. And right before each communion, they have preparatory services. <laughs> so at preparatory services is when every anybody that got in trouble with anything, uh, you know, wearing the improper head covering or listening to the radio or having movies or TV, you know, anything like that. A lot of times it was girls getting in trouble for wearing a veiling, which was, you know, in our church, the women had to wear a white cap covering with strings on each <laughs> corner. Um, so a lot of the times, like, girls got in trouble for wearing, like, a, a hanging veil or, like, a doily type of thing. Um, so. Or and, even going out with a bandana on instead of a covering to yeah, wash their hair. Yeah, and, correct. Any, anything. Or what if, like, the covering was just a little too small? The strings were supposed to prevent that. That's what my sister always said, too. Yeah. I asked my, I, I had that conversation with my mom and my sister. I said, what is the point of the, the, the strings on the covering? And then my sister said it, it she said it's to prevent the, the covering, covering from getting, getting too small. small. They say the first step of the covering getting smaller is the women take the strings off. Yeah. <sighs> so I I always thought it was like back in the old days before they could like afford pins or have pins they, they use the strings more, yeah, to tie yeah. them. I really think I that's think that, actually yeah, yeah, where it yeah. comes from and it just kind of like stuck as a it traditional morphed thing. Into now. This so, well, I mean, we always had like covering strings, you know. We were supposed to have like spacing of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the hair that was supposed to be exposed. Or some people even said the fiber not so here. Yikes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's been but so like, long it's since I've been entertaining, like differences. Yeah, and like how many the differences? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and the covering like had to come like to the ear. And it had like so the covering had to have a point on each side that like almost touched the ear, it had to come to the mm -hmm. ear. And I just remember Bishop always standing out front there saying, If the covering does not come to the ear, the head covering is considered too small. I, I don't know why. I can just always I can still hear that in my in my head. And it's just crazy. But anyway, back to the shorts. So like so before I if I would have been a member, um, to be able to proceed with taking communion. I would have had to, uh, the, so the, the bishop would have stood up in front of the whole church, which was probably like 300 or 350 of the mound of people. Mm -hmm. And he would say your name and he would have said what you did. And then I think they would have said something if the, the person that's in sin um, agrees with, you, you know, these, the charges, I'll say. <laughs> is to arise and and say yes so bishop says what they did and then you would stand up and front of the whole church and just say yes and then sit back down again that that's the only thing the confessions um did so it wasn't it wasn't like you had to stand up in front of the church and you know do this whole spiel about 
you know, like some church, some Mennonite churches, you, you yourself have to go up front and do like a speech and confess, which, oh my goodness. Yeah. We did not have to do that. Well, and that's a really widely varied practice too. And it's also important to say that because you weren't a church member, you were now immune from that mm -hmm. public humiliation. But that's because the still. parents were expected to take care of it. Correct. Right. But still, like, would they now, some Mennonite churches, I understand, have, like, prayer lists. Like, would you have ended up on the prayer list? I, so, or, maybe not maybe the gossip email chains. Yeah. My bad. The, my, so, my mom's church that I grew up in, like, they wouldn't have, they do have, like, a, a phone chain, but it wasn't for that kind of stuff. It was used for you know, prayer requests for people that were ill or, you know, um, to take meals to people. That's like that, what it was used for. Um, they would have, I don't think they would ever, uh, you know, have used the, the chain like that to, you know, spread, <laughs> spread something so like more that. No, it spread like the it. church the next Sunday. Did you hear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, and again, it's, it's so different for guys and girls. Like girls and women are just held to way different standards. I like the saying uh, that goes, you can never tell a man is Mennonite until you see his wife or girlfriend, which is so true. <laughs> It is so true. And it also depends to like what kind of Mennonite you are. But in our church, like the guys did not dress that much different than like what we would have called the world. I mean, we wore jeans and polo shirts and sometimes t-shirts, although t-shirts were kind of frowned upon. You didn't really get in trouble for them. But um, yeah, like we could buy our clothes at the mall and like, while the women had to get their head coverings made a certain way and you know, homemade Joyce clothing. Oh, yes. I still live a mile away from Joyce Long's uh, place. Yeah, it's fine. Yes, yeah, so everybody got their coverings made by her. Everybody, it seemed. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's there was lot. always that one covering maker for like each oh, community. Yeah. And sometimes it was even in different church districts because, you know, like if you have a different mm -hmm. church district, the bishop might be just a little stricter. Well, but she or, had all the different coverings. She, she did. made it for the. the She'd make veils for the people who wore veils. She made the yeah. She she could do it all. Yeah, she she made, um, yeah, she because she was not part of my mom's church. No, um, and Joyce Long's covering was not that big. She no, wore like yeah, a little, yeah. like just the little tiny one with no strings on it. But she she definitely made uh, coverings for my mom's church people too. Which, yeah, <laughs> more power to her. Wow. No, no, like we had really only had, yeah, we had, we had sometimes different people, yeah. Depending on the, the like the, the district. district mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting, it's interesting that like one person can sit there and make like all of these different denominations. Yeah, she had to know the rules for all the churches right. because she like had to somebody make sure. Somebody had to be helping her. Well, yeah, she had to make sure she was, because you didn't, if you made somebody's too small, then they weren't going to be next. Right, right. She also measured, like, I think, well, the person that was getting the covering made probably would have had a pattern, though. No? Like, I mean, Joyce Long would also, like, wanted you to come in person so she yes. could, like, measure Oh, yeah, she, she would she would mess with your hair. And yeah, she, because yeah, it had to make fit. sure that it was, the depth was good enough that it was going to sit on your head good. Yeah, for sure. I, and, like, those white cap coverings are not like a veiling where oh, like a veil you could just put on any type yeah. of hair or head and yeah she would sit there yeah i went to her she'd make sure how your bun is yeah. and how it's gonna sit so it contours because perfectly <laughs> as i got older she had to make it deeper because i had so much hair because my covering started moving back a little bit because my bun mm -hmm. and so she had to refix that right yeah, that's crazy. I'm so glad I didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> also, did you have to wear hats or anything? No, we they encouraged it, but we it was not enforced. Um, it was enforced for the ministry, though. 
What type of hats did they have to wear? Oh, a big black hat. <laughs> it was not a straw hat, so it was like the... The black wool. The black wool, yeah, okay. yeah. So how wide did the brim come? That I honestly can't tell you because I never wore them, and I was never really close with any of like the gotcha. industry that much, so... It was just a big black hat. It was, was a big black hat. That yeah. like, typical church members, like, they didn't have to wear, they were not required to wear. Right, and... and the ministry is held to different standards than what the general congregation is held to. Like the ministers have to wear like a plain suit. You know what yeah. the plain suit oh, yeah. is? So it's not open in the front. It's all tight. You can't see is the that shirt. Is that a generational here. change though? Because I know a lot of grandpa's fry shop, like a lot of them were wearing the black suits and the black hats and they weren't part of the ministry. Okay. Oh, actually, you know what? No. It's when you get married, that's what it is. When you get married is when you have to wear it, start wearing a plain suit. Yeah. That's what I remember because that. Thing, a lot of them wore it. Well, yeah. maybe if you wear a plain suit before you get married, do you think it makes it so that you can't find somebody to get married? <laughs> I mean, that, the V that that creates down the chest could be like pointing to areas that are you don't like in a <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that's funny. But yeah, like, broad fold pants was also, like, they had to wear that. The ministry is required to wear that. As far as I know, that is still, like, part of the church ordinance. <laughs> is that the word? Is that yeah. just an Amish term? I don't know. Church, church rules. Church rules, rules. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, so, that's, yeah. I, it, when you become a minister in the church, it's like, oh god. Your life changes so significantly. You have to paint your vehicle completely black. Not just like, okay, standard church members have to have a black vehicle, but the wheels don't have to be black. Like when you become a minister, you and have to or anything, anything ordained in the church, you have to paint your vehicle entirely black, including the wheels. <laughs> And I think you're not, I think you have to paint them black too. It's not that oh, you yeah. can go it's out. Oh yeah, it's paint. Yeah. It's not like you can go out and get rims that are already made black. Um, I I'm think sorry. you actually what? have to or paint them Or wrap or anything. No, yeah, you, yeah. you take paint and you paint them black. I can't say that for sure. But that's but the only I way I've ever seen is, it done. Yes. <laughs> I mean, so, maybe somebody would go get a wrap yeah. and let it go, but... This is all very interesting, but like going back to like the the shorts that you were while you were running. So we've talked a little bit about how that that affects you in the future, right? Like how it would affect you versus like church rules and all of that stuff. Didn't you tell me about a certain book your mother had too? Oh yes, um, I think the book was called. Uh, a Parent's Guide to Preventing Homosexuality. <laughs> I think that was the name of the book. And I can't, I, I don't know who it was written by, but it was not written by anybody, oh. like, conservative. Well, like, in the Mennonite or Amish community. Oh. Somebody conservative, but not in the sense of being Mennonite or Amish. Like, maybe, like, no, Anabaptist, necessarily. Uh, no, yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, but he was ex-gay, and I put that in quotes. Mm -hmm. Um... I never read it, but I just saw the book laying around, and I was like, oh, I think my mom is probably having uh, suspicions, you know? Clearly that worked out, though. Yeah, it did. I am a good Christian, heterosexual, um, <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> my dream. <laughs> Your dream? So, yes, no, I knew I was gay since I was in kindergarten. I knew I was different. I did not grow up around movies tv radio i had no idea that uh there was anything as the lgbt community i knew i liked boys back then and i was how old are you in kindergarten like five yeah. six and I, it, it annoys me when people nowadays are like well kids don't know anything about their sexuality and stuff like that i'm like kids know way more than what adults mm -hmm. think they do and i knew i was different back then and i and i also hate when people are say kids are you know the whole gay agenda like movies and tvs influencing your kids to be gay and i'm like 
how the fuck does are we allowed to cuss? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good to ask. <laughs> 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 okay. Really you. I don't know if your podcast gets flagged if there's like a uh, no, mark for explicit. Okay. Content. Okay. Good. Um. Okay. Uh, what was I talking about? Um. You were talking about how people um, say like, about boobies and books. Oh yeah. oh yeah. How yeah kids are yeah influenced to be like gay or trans because of the, the influence of, from pop culture and stuff like that. And I was like, no, because I did not grow up around any of that stuff. I grew up in the church being a holy good boy and I was gay. Um, and you so, always knew that. And, and I always knew that I was too. And I've spent years like, so I didn't know it was supposed to be bad when I was that age until I reached, uh, I'm going to say like, 10 i remember my mom saying something about we were driving past good store in new holland and she said um we know something about we know we're living in end times because it's going to come the, to the day where plane companies are going to be forced to hire gay people to work in their businesses um and that's something about we're living in the end times because of like plain companies having to like not discriminate against the LGBT community. And that is like the first memory I have of knowing that like gay was wrong. And I don't think I'll ever forget that. And I was probably like 10 years old, nine or 10, I would say. So I think that's kind of what set me down the whole path of like, Oh, there's something wrong with me now. Mm -hmm. And so it was a disaster from the age, I would say, 11, 10 up to I was like 23. Oh my God, life was horrible. Like I was so into religion. I wanted to be a, a pastor. I wanted to do everything for the Lord. I wanted to join a church and get baptized and, and do the Lord's will. And but I didn't want to do any of that stuff until God cured me of this gay disease that I had. I was like, okay, you're supposed to cast your cares upon the Lord and the Lord will give you strength and he, you can overcome this. And I spent years and years of praying and just weeping and confessing. I, I mean, I must have got saved at least seven times. I've done rededications I countless times. And I just was like, I, why am I not getting, becoming straight? Like, I am confessing, I'm pouring it all out. Why is God torturing me this way? And, and in the meantime, I'm also like starting to get backlash from friends and the church and stuff like that, even though I wasn't a member. Like, I was called a faggot and, and you know, just the small discrimination stuff that you get. And, that was years. I remember promising myself by the time I turned 16 that I will be straight. And I think I was like 14 and then 16 came and I was like, okay, when I turn 18, I'll be straight. That came still was gay. And it, and from 18 to 23 was probably the worst years of my life. I was so suicidal, so depressed. I wanted to be like my friends. I wanted to get married and have a wife and have kids and, you know, um, just live a n normal life in quotes um and it didn't happen and i was doing all this stuff that i was told like i was supposed to do for you know god to answer the prayers in your life and i went to so many different churches i left uh the, the horning church and i started going to hammer creek mennonite um and i went there for a couple years and that went to a disaster because the youth pastor pulled me to the side and he was like, Oh, I heard you, you're, you're gay. And he wanted to, he laid hands on me. He prayed over me and I was bawling. Cause I wasn't at that time too. I still wasn't quite ready to accept who I was. And for him to like violate my space like that was, was just horrible. So I left there, um, and then I started going to Petra Christian Fellowship in New Holland for a couple years. And then I, one Sunday, they gave this, just this heterosexual pastor just gives this sermon about 
how you know bad it is being gay in the Old Testament, blah 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 blah. Typical evangelical heterosexual white Christian male, you know, type of thing. And that broke me. I was so broken after that message just because of like there was no love in the message that he, that pastor was giving. It was all uh, condemnation and damning, and there was no um, love in it. There was no just be nice to people, even though you might disagree with them. You know, they, they can overlook all the other sins, but there is something with the being gay or trans or whatnot that 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 is something the church focuses so much on while they ignore gluttony they ignore um child rapists yeah they child, allow, yeah they allow the pedophiles in their church Pe and just let them go yeah like, oh you gay as soon as it comes to two adult men in a consensual you know giving enthusiastic consent all of a sudden it's that's Ooh! Oh, oh, no. All of a sudden, well, now we got an issue. You can't be part of this anymore. Right. Um, and and the whole love the sin or hate the sin, uh, that's oh just God. fucking bullshit. Like, duh, oh, that makes me so mad when, when people say that. And I'm no longer Christian anymore, and when people say that, um, I, I like to say, hate the religion, love the religious, and all of a sudden, they're like, <laughs> me and i'm like well how does that feel yeah it sucks doesn't it yeah and if that's per persecuting them then yeah. what are they doing to it, you? it feels like a personal attack to them yes. and um it's, it's not cool um yeah it sucks and i'm and I, and I think now that i'm out of religion and out of the church um i actually do consider myself an atheist um I mean, life is so good. Like, it's not perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. Um, but I used to have a panic attack uh, just about every night. Panic attacks that would could wipe me out for a whole week. Mm -hmm. And once I, one evening, I just went outside. I looked up to the sky. It was a cool spring morning. I think it, it was around 2 o'clock in the morning. I had the, one of the worst panic attacks. And I went outside. And I'm struggling with my faith already. But I went outside because I couldn't take it anymore. I went outside, 2 o'clock in the morning. I went out back in the field. It was all quiet. The stars were shining bright. I had a breakdown. I was bawling. I got down on my hands and knees. And I held both my hands up to the sky like you do in like a worship service. And I was praying like I've never prayed before. And I said, God, if you're there, if you're real, you have to give me a sign right now because i can't continue doing what i'm doing i'm gonna probably i think i probably would have killed myself mm -hmm. and i i was out there for like a while I, I can't even tell you how long it was i just after i was done praying i was like you gotta give me a sign and i just stayed there looking up at the heavens i just stayed quiet for the longest time and nothing <laughs> happened and that was the, I, I, I got up and I was walked up our patio steps and I was like, I don't believe in God anymore. And all at, when, when I said that out loud, like this huge burden, <laughs> it felt like I cut this backpack filled with like something bigger than a backpack but this heavy weight like dropped off my back the sky looked different the air smelled different everything around me just got clear I, I don't even know how to explain it everything changed that very second and that was the last time I ever prayed, and that was probably so oh, us coming on six years ago now. Thank you. Yeah, it's... How are you feeling right now? I feel good. I don't think I ever went to my story to that extent. Wow. There's a, And there's a whole lot more to my story, but that's, like, the gist of it. Yeah, gist of it. Yeah, yeah, thank people you. People thank you so much. get a lot from that story. But yeah, it's... I can talk about it now without getting emotional. It depends what stage you catch me at. If 
I can say that story of how I went outside and mm -hmm. prayed. Like, I would just immediately start bawling. That is a deeply personal. Because I was sold out to my faith. I, I cannot stand when people say, well, you didn't want to be a Christian because you wanted to sin or you hated God. No, I was not. I was not that at all. I was fully into it. I, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I was all into it. And you were just like, I just need this one thing. Yeah. I, just I went out there and I said, this is it. I, I said, I cannot do this anymore. And some people are probably going to hear this and be like, well, yeah, just give it some more time. You know, uh, no, uh, that, that time was 20 years that he could have showed me, showed me something. Well, and you said you went to the, you got saved over and over. Oh, yes. I think yeah. there's, I think there's <laughs> a lot of us that can relate yeah. to that. Uh, it, 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 the change better. didn't yeah. happen, so I must not have done it right. right. So I have to do it again. Exactly. And I was always the one, like, to be like, oh, no, am I really saved? Yeah, like, I gotta how do, do I, again. yeah, how do I know if I'm actually saved? Because God does, like, you don't hear anything from a God saying your name, well, other than, like, the Bible saying things, your name is now in the Book of Life, but... Ooh, what happens if I had a false conversion or my heart was hardened or something like that and uh, I was having a false conversion so uh, yeah I did it so many times and it was such a disaster that I yeah that evening I just everything changed and I used to have people coming up to me and ask like see they would see me in public it'd be like I can tell you're a Christian. Like, the light of Jesus just beams from you. I, I shit you not, I've had that on multiple occasions. Well, random. So, Would yes. you like me to lay hands on you? <laughs> so, 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 so graciously sharing. Hail <laughs> Satan. <laughs> if that would make you happy, by all means. <laughs> I, I really, really appreciate yeah. you sharing so much of your story. Yeah, like, sure. It's so powerful to hear from somebody about how, like, their journey went kind of sort of from, like, knowing you were different to, yeah. to finding this whole other way of living that doesn't necessarily involve religion. And, right. you know, to be clear, like, I've done the other podcasts where we talk about, like, what atheists believe and what Satanists believe and mm -hmm. all of that. So like if you're interested in their morals and ethics, you should probably watch those podcasts. Right. But in the same token, just because somebody is an atheist does not mean that they don't have morals or ethics right. or values or have values that they hold dear to them. And that there can be joy outside of right. religion. Exactly. Yeah. And there's life outside of religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, atheism gets such as negative um the just the word usually if people ask me you know what are you i just say that i'm not religious because the word atheist just itself has such a negative connotation mm -hmm. to it that even people that aren't religious will be like ooh atheist like ooh they're bad people right um, and atheist it just means you lack belief in a god that uh, trust me i know bad atheists i know atheists that hold really wacky ideas um but in the colloquial sense like atheism is just you lack belief in a god or gods. That's it. And that's the only yeah. thing that ties you to right. with all right. Yeah, people. yeah, exactly. Um, and yes, I'm not saying not all religious people are bad. Absolutely not. Not all atheists are good, but they're not all bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so one of the things that I often remind people is that when you get a group of people, you can literally never say that they're all a group of good or bad people. Right. When you get humans, there's always some people that are human yes, that absolutely. are going to commit crimes that are going to be bad people. Absolutely. So there is no utopia. Right. And there are certain crimes that occur without boundaries, no yeah. matter where you go or what community you're in. They exist in every cultural mm -hmm. group in the world. So yeah. I just want to make that clear. Correct. Even now as an atheist, like when I was a Christian and you know, you would like fuck up, you would just go pray to God and be like, forgive me. And you're no longer held responsible for your sins. Now that I don't do that anymore and can't do that anymore. It's like, oh damn. Well, now I'm responsible for my actions. If I wrong somebody, you gotta make I it. gotta go back to them and be like, look, I'm sorry. I did this. Um, you know, the actions of yes, I, 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 
I take, yeah. I take yeah. full responsibility for my actions now, or as good as I can be. I'm not perfect, um, but I try to take, if I've wronged people, like try and, you know, make amends and not just wrong somebody and then go to bed that night and pray that Jesus will forgive me and then never go back to that person and, and make it right. So, yeah. Oh, my phone's ringing. That's going to mess up. What are you doing? It's not a mess. So, well, yeah, there's a lot more to my story, too. Maybe that'll be something we can talk about in another episode because yeah, I yeah. feel we're probably running out of time. Oh, we're like completely over it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're good at that. You yeah, and I are good at that. We are really good at that. I knew when you but, said uh, it's usually a half an hour, I was like, oh boy, we're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, but no, like, so here is the one thing that we still have to do is like typically we ask each of our guests if they have anything. If there is anybody that is um, LGBTQ, Amish, Anabaptist, or any other type of religious group, or anybody that is queer, or anybody that's struggling, what would you like to say to them today? Um, reach out to one of us. Um, I'm Randall Martin on Facebook. I will. I don't care if that's on there. Um, I'm here to save somebody from committing suicide or having panic attacks, they're out there. Um, just reach out to Chris or, or me and uh, Mary, you know, there is help out yes. there. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, all three of us are. Yeah, I maybe I should have uh, got consent from you guys before I said oh, I reach know. out. But... <laughs> But that picture, like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. always willing. I think for me, like, I wish I always thought I was like the only gay person in the like the world. Like, gay was just something that happened in California, and I'm here in Pennsylvania. Like, I'm the only gay person in the the, the plain churches, and um, yeah, that is uh, definitely <laughs> not true. Um, Hello, I I exist. Yes, correct, and just love yourself. Uh, Find friends you can trust and to like vent to. That's very important. That played a very important role uh, to me. Also, I would like to plug uh, recoveringfromreligion.org. Um, they are a non religious, uh, secular um, therapy group. Uh, it's free to call them if you need, need help. Uh, there's no agenda to um, anybody can call if you're a religious person. Or, or whatever, anybody can call uh, the number and uh, they're not allowed to force their beliefs on you. They will help you through, you know, anything, try and uh, help you find a therapist in your area or if you just need somebody to talk to. Um, that aspect of it is free, but, you know, again, if you would get linked up with, <clears throat> excuse me, like a therapist or something, then of course, you know, there's fees and stuff for that. But uh, recoveringfromreligion.org is great i do a lot of stuff with them and and i know the name of it sounds like they just focus on religion but it, it's not it, it's for anything whatever um but for a lot of us i think our religious past is tied into oh, a lot of that absolutely and oh, it's hard yeah. to heal without addressing that correct so. yeah and I, even for myself like i feel sometimes that i still haven't fully accepted who i am uh just because of how ingrained it is it's like it is you're permanent conditioned. it's like a tattoo on your brain it's because of this because we are conditioned from birth mm -hmm. to hate ourselves yeah i mean and to think that we are going to hell and we're going to burn yeah, forever right. and ever and ever you're worthless without jesus i and, mean yeah and not even just because of that but because of you are, yeah you are homosexual you're mm -hmm. you're you're trans you're whatever and so you're in abomination before the lord and so you're going to hell again right and so it's like this overwhelming cycle that you have to find some semblance of acceptance mm -hmm. for yeah. yourself right so i would urge you to try to be as gentle as you can with yourself yeah i'm definitely and that i catch myself you know, yeah. like when I'm thinking negative that I catch, I, yes, thank yeah. you for that. Because I do catch myself 
doing that more often now and i'm just like okay take it easy on yourself this is just religious trauma that is triggering yeah, this yeah. and and stuff so yeah it's it's a journey <laughs> yeah it is a journey and i also want to tell you that you are worthy of love and oh, thank and you joy and having a good life yeah. and yeah. You, you deserve all of the good things in life just as much as the next yeah. person does. Yeah, thank you so and much. I That goes for anybody that's listening. If you're struggling, I would also like to plug, in addition to recovering from religion, the Trevor Project. Yes. yes. If you are anybody who's struggling with suicide, can reach out to them. If you're between the ages of 13 to 24, Okay. They do like very specific counseling for you. That is their um, target audience for LGBTQ folks from all walks and ways of life. Uh, they're very helpful for suicide prevention for queer folks. So that's an organization I would absolutely recommend. Mm -hmm. yes. What about you? Well, if, if you're in the Lancaster County area and are looking for support, I'm the vice president of Lindis Chooses Love. You know, you reach out to Let It Choose His Love. We're always there to help in any way we can. Awesome. Don't you guys have a clothing pantry as well? We do. We have a, a food pantry and a and a clothing pantry um, in Let It. And we're having our second Pride this year. And so we're officially a 501c3 now. And Congratulations. That's really good. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's and we're, we're definitely exist outside of you know the whole religious thing, right? Right. So, but anybody's welcome. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. We exist outside yeah. the whole religious thing. Yeah, like, as in like, ladies choose as love. From my understanding, does not care what religion right. people are. We don't care whatever. if you're atheist. We don't care if you're Jewish, Muslim, Christian, right. whatever. We are we are there. For right. You. Yeah. And so. We don't care if you're straight either. We'll, we'll help straight people too who need help. We'll help, we'll we'll help, help the opportunity. We'll help the straight people out of their um, straightness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that. I, <laughs> we can't change people's yeah, Yes, serious. that's you correct. Know, like, um, serious. Yes, if you're like straight, that, that was we just a joke. Chill. If you're yeah. straight, love yourself. That's who you are. Right. <laughs> oh, and embrace that. And embrace it. Go yes. On. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, if you're listening, thank you so much. I hope you all have a fantastic day and we'll see y'all next year. Awesome. See you. Bye.